today we're looking at some of my favourite sounds to use when creating R&B. Sound selection is king, even before mixing in my eyes. Get your sound selection right and the mixing process becomes a whole lot simpler. As they say, you cannot polish a turd. This is part two in the series and in this video we'll be looking at sampled based instruments, guitars, EPs, pianos and strings and in that order but feel free to use the chapters to jump around and find what's most relevant to you. If you're yet to see part one where we look at synths, don't worry, the order in which you watch these videos is irrelevant and you can watch that one right after this one. And of course, links to every sound showcased in this video can be found down in the description below. Okay, let's jump in. Out of all of the instruments, I think the guitar is one of the hardest to convincingly emulate as there's so much nuance to it. However, back in the day, 90s and noughties, a lot of R&B producers would actually use guitar samples played on their keyboard, MIDI guitars. But back then, just believe my friend, you could tell. Nowadays, some of these guitar VSTs are sounding indistinguishable from the raw thing, at least to me, especially when utilizing all of the tools and articulations at your disposal. And there are quite a few different libraries out there now that sound pretty good. Now, Session Guitarist is not just one guitar VST. It is a whole series with a range of different guitar VSTs based on different models of guitar. But two of my favorites are the Picked Nylon and the Electric Sunburst Deluxe. Let's look at the Picked Nylon. to play broken chords with this instrument. It is the picked nylon <laughs> after all. But it also has its own patterns built in, uh, which we can utilize and mix and match to fit our needs. And this is the case with all session guitarist instruments. Let's pull up Electric Sunburst Deluxe, for example. Here I have an R&B pattern loaded. And you hear this pattern in R&B a lot. For example, what song is this? Comment down below. Now, there's not a ton of R&B patterns here, or purpose-built R&B patterns, and this is probably the best one, in my opinion. So I don't want to fool you into believing that there is, um, given this example that I've showed you here. But like with picked acoustic, I tend to utilize the melody function over the patterns. Both and all session guitarists have a range of settings aimed at, you know, helping us set the guitar up for that sound we want to achieve, amps and effects and settings that can help playback sound more human and authentic. But this is just me scratching the surface. Like I said, there's a ton of session guitarist instruments. Um, I think one just came out today or this week, depending on when I release this uh, video. And they all have some fantastic walkthroughs and demos on their sales pages and on Native's YouTube. So I'm gonna leave that down in the description below if you want some more information on that. In this series, I like to give some premium products as well as some free products, but unfortunately, I just don't know of any good sounding free guitar VSTs. However, they might be out there. So if you do know, be sure to comment down in the comment section below and help us out. It's much appreciated. All right, let's jump onto EPs. Now, there's a few types of electric piano, but I'm either using a Rhodes or a Wolitzer sample library for my R&B. For my Rhodes, I go for the Scarby Mark I. This is an emulation of the Mark I Fender Rhodes, and this is your, your bread and butter when it comes to R&B and EPs. Every and any respectable sampler will have a Mark I sound in their stock library. remember in part one I showcased the FM Tyne sound, um, famous on the DX7. Uh, this is where that sound arrives. So if you haven't seen part one, be sure to check it out. I'm sure you're going to love those FM Tyne sounds just as much as I do. And for my well Litzer, um, again with Scarby, uh, but this time the Scarby A200. Now, well Litzers have a bit more bite to them. 
they're not as warm. So I tend to use Wurlitzers when I'm writing something that has a bit more of a groove. Now these sample libraries I have here are ancient. I've had them for years, but I still love them. Um, with the A200, I sometimes will throw a chorus and an RC20 on there, um, but we'll save that for my plugins and effects video, as that's been heavily requested. However, I do know there are many, many great sample libraries out there for EPs. Logic's EPs don't sound as good, but they're okay, especially when you add effects that add interest. With the Scarberry libraries, obviously they're sampled well, but that authenticity is also brought forth through additional samples like noise. And this is the same deal with my favourite pianos, though they've taken it just a few steps further. Like with the EPs, there are different types of piano, and of course different models of piano. And I like to always have one grand and one upright piano in my arsenal. For my grand, I use the Maverick piano, this is sampled from a 1905 grand piano, so real vintage, and to me, it just sounds right. As I mentioned earlier, it has a ton of additional samples outside of the many note samples it has on different velocities. Samples for the hammer, dampener, strings, and pedal, as well as a bunch of other settings to model your piano how you'd like. chords I'm playing here are a mix of extended minor chords, extended sus chords and diminished chords. All types of chords you need in your chord progression arsenal to make the most of the sounds I'm showing you here today. You can have the very best sounds but if you're not playing the right things with those sounds, what you make won't sound like R&B. So it's important we know these chords. And a tool like Melodics can help you build your skill and confidence in this area. With over 1500 courses, lessons and exercises that all give you real time feedback. A course that I enjoyed and I think you'd find very useful is the Seventh's Two course. Expanding on Seventh's One, which looked at major, minor and dominant seventh chords, Seventh's Two looks at the suspended seventh chord, a beautiful chord and one that I just showed in the example prior, and the diminished seventh chord and the minor seventh flat five chord or half diminished chord. These are chords you'll be using on a daily basis when you're writing your R&B chord progressions. Each lesson teaches you what the chord is and how to play it, whilst putting it within the context of a chord progression, you know, to give you that feel of the sound and the chord's function. And Melodics makes learning these concepts fun, but also keeps you accountable and committed uh, to just spending five minutes a day working on this stuff. And right now they're giving anyone that signs up the chance to win $1,000. All you have to do is click the link in the description below and enter the promo code. This will not only enter you into the draw, but will also give you a big discount on monthly and annual subscriptions. This deal is only here for a limited time, so if you are interested in improving your playing and you want to give Melodics a try, this is the time to do so. Links in the description below. Cool, so for my upright, I use the Gentleman Piano. Again, same deal, it has a ton of parameters to help us achieve that real sound and I think it does a good job. Though, to be honest, when making R&B, I tend to stick to the brighter tones of the grand piano. With an upright, you tend to have the lid closed, although you can close the lid on the Maverick too, I'm saying that, but the lid and general anatomy lends to a darker, muddier tone. Again, of course, Logic has its own piano sounds, but you won't find me using these. Um, if you're just starting out, if you don't have the money to purchase a better sample library for your pianos, feel free, definitely use them. Um, I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure about free 
uh, piano VSTs outside of Logic. If you know of some good ones, be sure to comment down below. Please, that will help us out a ton. I know many of you swear by other piano libraries, so feel free to name them down below. This is a two-way street, so I'd love to hear what you're using. Now, strings aren't used nearly as much as they were back in the day, especially around R&B heavily influenced by trap. However, in what some to refer to as alternative R&B, and what I like to call real R&B, hopefully I'm not stepping on any toes here, <laughs> strings are in full effect. You know, for reference, I'm talking artists like Lucky Day, Victoria Monet, her. Production from producers like D Mile, you know, that really want to bring the, you know, acoustic element back into R&B. Now, I think some of this music was actually recorded with live strings. However, I could be wrong. And if I am, well, this is just a testament to how good some of these libraries are sounding today. And so here are two of my favourites, one paid and one free. Let's start with the paid. Session Strings Pro. <sighs> Where to even start? Phrase Animator. I can hear this as the basis of a Lucky Day track, especially with the underlying part. The phrase animator gives you a ton of phrases from a range of songs, each of the songs having multiple phrases which we can access via key switches or via the phrase menu. But there's also the rhythmic animator. I've used this less because the rhythms don't really fit with my style, but we're not actually locked into any rhythm, so it's a bit of a poor excuse for my part. Not only can we affect the rhythm, we can also affect the velocity and also the techniques used. Notice the six here. That corresponds to tremolo. And of course, we can go on, but let's keep it moving. The last two modes, or first two modes in actual fact, set you up to write your own string parts from scratch. Fit with velocity switching to change articulations and playing styles in one mode and key switching in the other. Another cool feature is the smart pause to hash out quick string parts. And like with session guitarists, there's a bunch of parameters that help us in our pursuit of realism with things like bow noise, human eyes, and affects the shape and color the sound. And we can also make use of the mod and pitch wheel, assigning the mod wheel to expression and pitch wheel to scoops and falls. But most importantly, the sound and the quality of the samples um, that we have here are fantastic. And there's a bunch of presets to give you different flavors from vintage to modern and everything in between. All right, so what about the free option? So although it doesn't have a quarter of the bells and whistles of Session Strings Pro, you'll find that this free option also has a great sound and it's definitely one I recommend. It's called BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover and is from Spitfire Audio. And as the name would suggest, it's not just a strings library, it's a full orchestra from brass to percussion and it sounds incredible. And the best part is, you can get it for free. You have to fill out a form and wait two weeks to get it, I kid you not, but it's free nonetheless, which is mighty generous of them over at Spitfire. Or you can pay £49, or I'm not sure what it is in dollars, um, but bottom line is if you pay, you can get it straight away. Unlike Session Strings Pro, you'd load each section, violins, viola, or viola, etc., onto its own track. Um, however, this is something you can do in Session Strings Pro too. And again, we have different techniques. I'm not sure if we can key switch, but I know we can control the dynamics with our mod wheel. One of the biggest differences comes in their sizes. Session Strings Pro is about 30 gigs. Whereas miraculously, BBC's Symphony Orchestra Discover comes in at about a gig and it still sounds great. Now, there are a ton of other sample libraries for instruments like brass, electric bass and, and more. But this video is already, it's quite long. <laughs> so maybe they can go into part three, depending on how well this video does. So be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment below if you found it useful. 
as this is a main indicator for myself and for YouTube. And if you're yet to see part one, don't forget to check it out as it showcases some fantastic sounds that I think you'd like. I've been Stefan and as always, happy beat making.